Okay, so, yeah, so the second talk is going, also going to be presented by uh, Jing Pen. And so the, the title is uh, Robust Fitting in Computer Vision, uh, Easy to Easy or Hard. And so the, the other authors are Tajun Chin and Frank Newman. Yeah. Hi, sorry, it's me again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So let's continue. So to answer the question I raised just now, I'll show in this talk some theoretical hardness of the consensus maximization problem. So in previous uh, time, we already have many algorithms for consensus maximization. On one hand, we have RANSAC and its variants, which are usually very fast. And on the other hand, we have global optimal algorithms, which are slow in general. So in terms of the accuracy, the global optimal algorithms always guarantee the best solution possible, depending on the objective function. And the RANSAC and its variant does not guarantee the solution quality. Notice that. Although RANSAC guarantees return a full inline subset with a certain confidence, but these full inline subset does not, do not always lead to a good model fitting result, as we can see in this figure. These two points in the triangles are all inlines, but the model fitting result is actually pretty bad. So on the other hand, RANSAC and its variants are random heuristics, which makes their behavior hard to predict in challenging data sets. And the global optimal algorithm are deterministic. So the question we really want to ask just now is that, what can we achieve in the middle here? How many of these strengths we have listed can we achieve simultaneously? So, to answer this question, let's start our adventure in the complexity land. Our land contains three parts. The MP hardness, the parameterized intractability, the inapproximability. Each part of them um, shows one hardness result for the consensus maximization problem. So let's start one by one. <clears throat> so to first show that, maximum consensus is actually NP-hard. We first define a new problem called least kth order statistic, or LKOS. And in this problem, we want to find the thinnest lab that encloses k of the points. So let's see a one-dimensional instance with 10 points. In this figure, each V-shaped curve is the minimal slab width required for a model on the x-axis to enclose the ith point. I didn't render each point on the x-axis, but they are located on the x-axis. So, for example, if we have k equals to seven in the LKOS problem, that means we want to enclose seven of the points using the thinnest slab. The objective function of this problem looks like the red curve. And the optimal solution is rendered in black plus. So now I will guide you through a mental practice. And we'll see that if we can solve the LKOS problem in polynomial time, we'll be able to solve the consensus maximization problem also in polynomial time. So to recap, we define the linear version of the consensus maximization, or max, maxcon, by finding the slab with, with thickness epsilon that encloses the most number of points. So in the same data instance, the consensus maximization problem just wants to find the maximum number of V-shaped curves that are below the epsilon range. For example, if we have a solution x tilde, at this point, the number of V-shaped curves that are below the epsilon range is three. 
Therefore, the consensus at this point is exactly three. So we want to maximize this consensus. So assume we can solve the LKOS problem in polynomial time. All we need to do to solve a maximum problem is start with k equals to the number of points, which is 10 here. And we iteratively reduce the value of k and solve for the LKOS problem. And in each iteration, we want to check whether the global optimal solution of LKOS problem lies below the epsilon range. If that is not true, we know that we cannot have consensus size equal to the current k value because the, L the global optimal solution of LKOS problem represents the thinnest lab that we can use to enclose k of the points, which is greater than epsilon. So we have to find the largest k value whose corresponding optimum objective value is below the epsilon range. And that will be exactly the, maximum, uh, the maximum consensus value. And notice that we only need to solve LKOS problems at most n times, where n is the number of points. So if each LKOS problem can be solved in polynomial time, the algorithm I just mentioned is a polynomial time algorithm. And on the other hand, the, if we can solve the maxcon problem in polynomial time, we can also solve the LKOS problem in polynomial time by doing bisection over the inlier threshold epsilon and find the smallest epsilon such that the maximum consensus value is exactly the k value in the LKOS problem, which is seven here. So this kind of complexity equivalence tells us that if one of these two problems is NP-hard, the other one must also be NP-hard. And since Erickson et al. shows that LKOS problem is NP-hard, we also know that MaxCon is NP-hard. And this tells us that MaxCon cannot be solved in polynomial time if P is not NP. So in the second part, we already know that we don't want to hope to solve maxon in polynomial time. Therefore, we want to analysis, analyze the effect of some certain parameters to the total runtime of maxon. For example, we want to ask the question that, is maxon fixed parameter tractable, or FPT, in the dimension D? A parameterized problem is called FBT in some parameter k. If it can be solved in time, that is worst case exponential only to the fixed parameter k, but polynomial still to the input size. So we want to check whether we can set k equals to d here. And if the answer is yes, we know that the runtime is worst case exponential only to the dimension d. And if the application has a very low dimension, we can still hope to come up with an efficient algorithm to solve the maxcon problem, even though we have a large number of inputs. Unfortunately, we prove that this is unlikely to be true. We show that maxcon is, a, is actually W1 hard in the dimension D. By using the standard assumption that FPT is not equal to the class of W1, which is similar to the assumption that P is not NP, then MaxCon is in the class of W1, but not in the class of FPT. This tells us that we cannot hope to remove the dimension D from the exponent of the number of points in the runtime. And this result is proved by performing FPT reduction from the k-click problem to the maxcon problem, where k-click problem is W1 hard in the value k. So now we know that we don't want to hope to solve maxcon exactly in general. So we want to take a step back. 
we want to ask the question that, can we still have a efficient algorithm if we only want a, cer a certain desired approximation ratio, guaranteed approximation rate? So the approximation ratio is the ratio between the maximum consensus value and some approximate consensus value. We want to ask the question that, is maximum impetus? A problem is impetus if it can be solvable in polynomial time to any desired accuracy or any desired approximation ratio. If the answer is yes, then it's still good because in practice we can just ask for a certain accuracy level and just perform the polynomial time algorithm. However, we also show that this is not likely to be true. We actually prove that maxcon is APX hard, meaning that if P is not NP, then no polynomial time algorithm can solve maxcon up to any guaranteed accuracy level. This is done by performing L reduction from the max two set problem to the maxcon problem. And since max two set problem is APX hard, we know that maxcon is also MP hard, APX hard, sorry. So if you feel sleepy before, just remember this page and the next one. So we prove that maxcon is MP hard, which tells us that we don't want to hope to solve it in polynomial time in general. And we also prove that it's W1 hard in the dimension D, so that we don't hope to solve it uh, only uh, in the runtime that is exponential only in the dimension D. And we also show that maxcon is APX hard, which tells us that don't hope to come up with a very accurate algorithm that is exponential time. Furthermore, we have this result, which I haven't mentioned just now which is maxcon is FPT in the number of outliers and the dimension D. Um, this can be achieved by using the tree search method proposed by my supervisor, supervisor TJ to achieve the runtime of D to the O times the polynomial function of N and D. Although you might think of this as a slightly positive uh, result, but look at it deeply, you'll find out that even for a very low dimension problem and a moderate number of outlier rates, outlier numbers, sorry, not rates, we, the runtime will still approach to nearly infinite. So to summarize, in industrial applications, we almost always want our application to run fast because we don't want our autonomous car to run very slowly, right? So in, using this assumption, we know that we don't want to hope to come up with guarantees for robust fitting problem, for consensus maximization problem in general. So all we got to choose is whether we have random behavior or determinism. So that basically tells us that the algorithm I proposed in the last uh, talk is basically the best thing we can have somehow. Thank you. Sorry, just, just, just very quick. Um, of course, we can also do some other things in the future. For example, to perform guaranteed outlier removal um, by reduce the data into a smaller set without removing inliers before performing consensus maximization. This, this will reduce the input size significantly for global optimal algorithms. There are also already some previous works that shows reliable results. I think this direction is also good to pursue in the future. So last thing, there are also other robust statistical procedures for robust fitting, but they are not likely to be much easier than Maxcon. Um, although some of them can be solved to local optimality, the distance from local optima to the global optimal solution is unknown. And some of them assign weights to outliers, which is less effective than Maxon. So that's the message I want to send through this talk. Thank you. Thanks. So um, are there questions?
Um, hello. Uh, I was wondering uh, if you um, generalize the concept of RANSAC and like there are algorithms like Emily SAC, which have been proposed, which are generalizations of RANSAC. Uh, have you thought about analyzing uh, that family of algorithms and do you have any insight into what kind of results you have? Um, for other variants of RANSAC, like PROSAC, MLE SAC, and other SACs, um, in my last talk, the results actually contain the uh, solution for them. So if you take a deeper look into my paper, you'll find them. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Any more questions? OK, so let's thank uh, Jipeng once more.